Yes. How how did you get affiliated with being the the last minute guy? I mean, with Def Leppard, like jumping at the last minute to learn that many songs. I'm assuming by now you know. You have, all, you have all the songs down, probably. So like, if it happens, oh, like, I'm, yeah. not gonna, I'm not going through that again. I don't have the nerves for it. I just learned them all, so now I just know and I'm ready. But like, well, how did you end up the first time to hop into that in a, in a, in a clinch situation like that? I mean, that's well, it it goes back. You know, I've known the Def Leppard guys and the organization for 30 plus years. You know, I met them, Phil and Joe. The first time I met them was like '87 on the first go round of the Hysteria tour. I think when Tesla was opening up. I mean, that's how yep. long I've known the Tesla guys as well. Um, Phil Collin and I became f immediate friends back in you know '87, '88, and he's been like a godfather to me, big brother. He's more British brother, you know, and he's been such a supporter of me with all of my post trickster projects. Uh, most notably, 40 Foot Ringo, where uh, Joe and him were huge fans of the, you know the band 40 Foot Ringo that I had with PJ. And we were supposed to open uh, one of the Def Leppard tours. I believe it was the 2001 tour that they did, which I think was the X tour. And it didn't work out because there wasn't, we didn't have enough, we didn't have tour support and there wasn't enough money. So it didn't work out. But Joe and Phil, and Phil especially, always loved the sound of my voice, the raspy, you know, you know sort of thing that I would do, yeah. you know. And, and so what happened was, is uh, when Vivian got diagnosed with cancer in 2013, Phil was like, I got the guy, you know, and he told the guy, you know, told Joe and, you know, the other guy, Steve, you know, and I've known them for, you know, 25, 30 years. And they were yep. like, all right. So, um, but it was interesting when Phil and I in 2012 is what really kind of sealed the deal. Phil and I were on the Mike Huckabee show on Fox News. I don't know if you remember <laughs> that, but. We did this yeah. thing where, you know, Mike had a show on on Fox and he would play bass. He's a bass player. So he brought Phil on to talk about Phil was really, you know, promoting health and wellness and sort of kind of demystifying the rock star personality yeah. of, you know, the booze and the, you know, drugs and wild and eating junk food. And Phil is a health nut, you know, as I am as well, you know, and being healthy and working out and being in great shape and being the best you could possibly be. So. We did the show. Phil calls me up and says, "Steve, would you want to do this with me? I need backing. We're gonna do kind of a weird, a different version of pour some sugar on me." So I'm like, "Of course, man. Whatever you need." So went in and did the show, and I was singing along with Phil, doing all the pour some sugar on me, you know that. And Phil called me, you know, after he saw the broadcast, and he's like, he's like, I couldn't believe how great our voices blended together. And that was for him, I think, the moment where he said, Collective. "If there's ever something, if there's ever a problem with." Vivian, Steve's the perfect guy. And it was like a year later, a little less than a year later is when he called me and said, this is what's going on and we need you. And that's, you know, 2013 is when, you know, the, the, the sort of the, the Def Leppard journey began for me as being there, you know, kind of, you know, secret weapon and somebody to step in at the, at a moment's notice to save the day, if you will. I think they need to do like uh, Iron Maiden and just have three guitar players and always have you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah well, it's it's been you know there was talked about, but I, I, 